Sometimes design decisions from decades ago will come back to haunt you. So Matt, I hear you have a story about corp.com going up for sale? Yeah, this one's pretty interesting, I think. So Krebs on Security, who I think a lot of us follow, uh, has this article about the, the domain corp.com, right? Which, you know, on the face of it, seems like it's a pretty great domain to own if you have it. Um, the guy who owns it is trying to sell it currently for $1.7 million. And that's all well and good, uh, but there's more to it than just the fact that there's a domain for sale. So corp.com has sort of a special meaning to certain versions of Windows and certain deployments of Active Directory. So back in the day, Microsoft used to recommend to people that if you want to set this up, your Active Directory, so you might want to use like a, you know, you need to put down some sort of domain at the end, so everything underneath that domain is all sort of grouped together. And they'd recommend if you got nothing better, use corp. Okay, that seems reasonable. But there's something special in the way that Windows Active Directory deployments will start to do DNS. So when you're inside of the network, you know, if you, you say server01, you know, if you do like slash slash server name and, and it'll, yeah. you know, connect to that server by name. Yep, it just finds it. It just finds it, right? So it's actually trying to stick things on the end and it'll do, you know, it'll try and resolve the entire domain name for you based on just that one part. So there's some magic going on in the background, how Windows likes to do this DNS they call it DNS devolution or domain devolution, mm -hmm. where it's sort of like starting at a set of rules of, we'll try this one, then we'll try this one, then we'll try this one. And eventually we hope to find the domain you're actually looking for based on what we think we know about the network, which is fine, again, if you're just doing it within your own network. Mm -hmm. Now, if you take a laptop that was joined to a domain like this that was built way back in the day when Microsoft recommended Corp as the default, and you take it to Starbucks, and this is actually a scenario they talk about in the article, and you say, okay, I'm going to try and mount all my shares, and server01 is there. Server01, uh, kid, that's not working. Server01.corp, uh, that's not working either. We're going to try server01.corp.com. Okay. Seems like a reasonable thing, except <laughs> corp.com exists on the larger internet, and that's the domain. So the guy who's owned this for years and years has been seeing all this traffic coming from Windows machines that were configured to be part of an AD deployment like that. Yeah, I can only imagine what, what's come across. Exactly, exactly. So there's all sorts of like authentication attempts and file share connection attempts. And so the guy who owns this actually worked with a researcher. So over an eight month period, they saw 375,000 different requests wow. from various boxes over the internet, all trying to connect to what they think is their internal corporate network. Yeah. Uh, and they also briefly tried to, you know, they would set up like a service that would listen for the actual authentication requests. And within 15 minutes, they said, we can't. Be like a full-time job replying to these people. It, well, that's the thing. <laughs> like, if you own corp.com, you can be the, the direction that all this traffic flows in for all these boxes that are, you know, out on the real, the, the real internet, which is why it's valuable for attackers, why mm -hmm. they don't really want it to fall into the hands of criminals or nation state actors who would love to sit there and watch credentials and sensitive information just roll in. So what do we do about it? I mean, uh, Microsoft has tried to buy corp.com in the past from the guy who owns it for $20,000. He's asking 1.7 million. I mean, <laughs> I'm hoping they come to some sort of resolution because I would much rather see Microsoft own that domain than yeah, so I'm curious, is the guy trying to sell it just to Microsoft or is he willing to sell it to anybody else? Because, you know, if the wrong person gets it, it could be a bad thing. I think, I don't think he would sell it to anybody. I think he, because the owner is sort of aware of the problem and has gone to lengths with these other folks who did the security testing to show that the problem exists, I don't think he would sell it to just anybody. I mm -hmm. think he's trying to do the right thing here. But he's also got what in any other world would be a very valuable domain to have. I mean, corp.com, I mean, there's a reason that we have, well, actually, no, that's another good point to bring up. Um, things like .corp, .local, .lan, yep. these are all the same kind of problem, right? Because if you've decided to make your, your domain LAN or corp or local or internal, um, those would also technically be things that might get leaked out to the outside in the same thing. However, um, I think it was ICANN. Yeah, ICANN has actually reserved a bunch of those already. 
Okay. You can't get you can't get dot local. You can't get dot corp, dot home, any of that kind of stuff. So this guy just might have gotten to it before I can did at the time. I think home dot com, mail dot com, you know, local dot com are all still valuable, um, but the ones that the TLD versions are locked. You mm -hmm. cannot get a hold of those. The the interesting thing is that you know people will use domain names internally in a specific way, with the assumption that you know no one's ever going to use these names outside. And then over time, use cases change, and now we're stuck with this domain that's kind of a, a hot potato, and it's worth money. He probably spent a good amount of money on it himself. I can understand yeah, just, motivation. Yeah, just even, I think I saw that at times he was reaching out to companies early on to try to say, hey, you, you have a, a problem here that you need to address. I shouldn't be getting You're, what I'm getting. Yes, this is um, true. But I guess with that volume, you just can't keep up with it. You know, this kind of reminds me of the same idea when a company lets an uh, important domain expire. So, for example, a domain where uh, they're using to send updates, and now the expires, uh, the wrong person buys it, and now they can push any terrible thing back to the users. And it just reminds me of that kind of case. And the, I mean, you, we kind of extend a certain level of trust to DNS. I mean, mm -hmm. that's kind of why we have things like DNSSEC these days, so that that level of sort of casual trust gets bumped up a little bit more, so you can kind of prove who you're talking to. Right. Um, but you know, plain old vanilla DNS. If someone controls the DNS server and says this is what your site will resolves to, then it's the same problem, right? You've got this, you've got control over somebody else's infrastructure and all the trust that comes with it, all the assumptions that come with saying, well, you know, you know. Ken.com now resolves to this IP address that never resolved to before, and who knows where, where your traffic's going. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the big question is, what can we actually do about this? Now, you know, regardless of what happens with this purchase, if you set up Active Directory at some point in the past and you're stuck with one of these sort of problems, it's not trivial to change it. Like, you can't just go in a configuration file and edit it and right. and like reboot one thing. You kind of have to take your AD down yeah. for a while. It, it seems like there were quite a few steps you might have to step through to, to update. This. And you kind of have to make sure before you even attempted that, when it comes back up, every place that you were using your old domain has been fixed. Mm -hmm. And you're going to find places where you, you didn't fix it. I, I promise you that. So people were kind of hesitant to, to deal with that kind of prolonged downtime and debugging that goes with that. But there's not a great way around that either. Right. Um, so, I mean, I think all you can do is say, if you're still doing this, if you're still using Corp or any of the things that are kind of like that, that are not, if, you're, if your AD isn't under your own domains that you actually own on the open internet, it's a good idea to change them mm -hmm. and make some plan for the future that you should eventually get off of this. Um, and I don't know, I feel like it's, it's a tough situation to be in, but it's one that you have to kind of deal with sooner rather than later, especially if this is, these kind of purchases are happening. So. Yeah, well in a way it, it's good that this is coming to light that he's looking to sell it because maybe it does spur a few companies or people to actually go through those updates then. Yeah. They, have, they would have to be a real trusted party, though. That's the thing. They'd have to be somebody, because even if somebody else buys it, right, they're still going to be receiving this traffic. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be some long tail of devices that don't get updated, that don't get managed, don't get corrected, mm -hmm. um, and their traffic's going to end up there. You know, it actually reminds me of a, a, a couple, there's a couple talks that I've, I've seen at, at Black Hat or DEF CON that are very similar to this sort of idea. There was one on domain squatting. Okay. Um, where, like, so in, in DNS, and I'm, I'm going on a tangent here, but in DNS, if you flip a single bit in the name that you're asking them the question, um, that, you know, it'll, you get a completely different question and a completely different answer. Right. But enough bit errors occur within the DNS infrastructure that you'll get stuff like that happening, where someone will ask for like Google.com and maybe like the, the, one of the bits in, in the second letter gets changed. And it's still a valid domain, so the DNS request goes through and the traffic ends up at some totally different server. Some random other website or some other server, yeah. Yeah, so the guy had done a survey on, you know, how much traffic can I get with just single bit flips off of, like, the Alexa top 10 or top 100 sites. And it was significant. It's kind of an interesting thing that, like, even when you try your hardest to prevent this sort of stuff from happening, physics at the <laughs> DNS level, like, gets in the way. Yeah, it, it just finds a way. Yeah. It's weird. This just random 
you know, error bit flips. So what do you guys think? Anything else you want to say about this one? Yeah, this makes me wonder if, like, I don't know if it already exists or, or if there is a, an, an opening for somebody to create a nonprofit where, you know, you will get the funds in to try to solve this kind of problems, right? Like, for me, for you, like, 1.7 million sounds like a lot, but if it means for the better of everybody, can a nonprofit come in, get some donations, and then buy this domain off the internet to prevent, you know, further damage? I guess, but what do you, you, you want to pay one, you know, pretend, pretend you're trying to pitch this to the board of whatever nonprofit you're on. We'd like to spend $1.7 million for a domain we're not going to actually use for anything, right? It's all preventative. It's preventative. Right. It's still a hard sell, I think. Un uh, unless your whole mission of your nonprofit is to do just that, to go find these domains or things that, mm -hmm. that can pose these kinds of issues. But, you know, then I, then I think you're right, Matt. It becomes really difficult. How do you sell that? You know, the other and that might be why this person was going to Microsoft. Mm -hmm. I would also think that, you know, in hindsight, one of the best things you could have done was taken this domain out of play earlier. Like if you were ICANN, mm -hmm. right? If you're doing things like, you know, dot .corp will never be something you can register, dot .local will never be something you can register. Corp.com, if you have that same power, just say no, this is not a valid domain ever, shall never be a valid domain, except that this guy already bought it and he's looking to get some sort of return on his investment. Mm -hmm. So that motivation, and I feel like it's gonna be another hard sell to try and convince somebody who wants 1.7 million to hand it over to a, a third party responsible for internet infrastructure uh, for no money. Right. right. So, yeah. guess we'll have to keep an eye on how this plays out. Yeah. Using domain names that could possibly resolve outside of the network um, that you don't have control over is a security issue, like it or not. It's important to take the time to update your AD or make sure it's updated, or if it's not, to lay out the plan for when will you have it updated and how you can get there.